Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're looking at how I painted this dragon. I'm not going to show the painting process, I'm just going to talk through the nodes and how I've hooked them up and talk about what I've done along with the why and I'll be pointing to other videos that give a detailed breakdown of the things that I'm talking about. Once again, remember to check out my website and the playlists in the description and the playlists on the channel for more free courses and detailed guides about what I'm talking about. All these techniques I go into a bit more detail with, with my character course, and it's got a beginner's perspective, so it will take you through step by step if you're confused by anything. Okay, so here's the final dragon in all its painted glory. So this has been retopologized and I've baked the textures across. Now, rather than show you the whole process for that, I want to just point you to my baking playlist. It's got a really detailed breakdown of how I go about doing this, and there's no point in repeating that process. So make sure you check the links in the description to the baking process, and look particularly at the rock asset and how I bake normal maps and cavity maps there. I'll give a brief rundown of how I've hooked those textures up here in the node tree, and also talk about some more advanced things that I've done to give it some more interesting character. I am using the Node Wrangler add-on so I can highlight different maps on the model by pressing Control, Shift, and left click. So of course there's the normal map to start off with. When I'm baking, I always like to do the normal map first because that's the quickest to bake and you can see if you've got any issues. I'll probably do another video on how to fix baking problems and put that into the baking playlist. So check the card in the corner and the link in the description that will come soon if you have any baking problems. So here's the normals for the dragon. I had a few issues baking the normals, hence why I thought I'd do a video about that and how to solve any problems. One of the first problems is don't use 2.9 at the moment because it's very glitchy. <laughs> but by the time you watch this video, they may have fixed those things. So that's the normal map. The next maps I baked was the cavity and the ambient occlusion. I'm not sure I've put about baking ambient occlusion in the playlist yet, so there'll be another video coming separately on that as well. But the cavity map looks like this. And that's going through a color ramp, so it's just boosting it just a touch. So boosting some of the blacks and some of the whites there. And that gives me a nice lot of control if I wanted to give it some over-the-top stylized shading or bring it back slightly. Now that always goes into a mix node with an overlay. So you've got these mix options here. That's what it looks like to start off with. And if I control shift left click on this, you'll see the results. At the moment, it's a factor of one, which means it's all the bottom one, which is all this cavity map into the color ramp. When I turn it to the overlay, and we're seeing the color with the overlay over the top, the overlay takes the black bits, and makes the color coming from here darker and the white bits and the color coming from here and makes them lighter. So an overlay mode will just use the dark bits and bright bits and make your image darker and brighter in those areas. So we use this overlay mix node with our cavity map. I'll show you the ambient occlusion as well. So here's the ambient occlusion and you can see that boosts those dark areas. And that's really nice if you use it with a multiply node. Multiply is very similar to the overlay, but it doesn't use any white. So it's just the dark bits are going to darken the image. So that's why we use it with an ambient occlusion node. And you can see the results of the overlay there and then the ambient occlusion just boosting those shadows. So here's the color map. So this is what I've painted on, very simple. When you've got a cavity map and an ambient occlusion map, you don't really need to do much with the colors. You really just give it some variation, and obviously the horns are a sort of ivory color, and we've got some variation in the dragon's face. But you don't really need to paint much detail, so you don't have to really be an artist as such in terms of your skilled use of the brush. So from that color, mix with the overlay, suddenly it looks like it's got more personality. Mix with the multiply, and then with the normals as well, we've got the final result. I have used the cavity map, again here, into a color ramp, this time giving it some more brightness and flipping it over. So you can come into here and you can use the flip color ramp option there because I'm bringing this into a roughness and the light bits are rough and the dark bits are shiny. So you can see this bit here is gonna be very shiny, this end of the horn there. I've mixed that with a dragon gloss mask and I'll talk about that in a moment, but you can see there's the color ramp. And if I plug this straight into the roughness, and show you what this looks like. It looks quite nice. So we've got any dark bits or slightly darker bits becoming more shiny and the light bits staying rough. That's why I flipped the cavity because the crevices are the bits that you want rough and the highlights, though the bits on the edge, are the bits that are going to be glossy. So that's the thinking there. But as you can see, it's not done a bad job, it's all good. And it's got some variation 
in the shininess, which you can sort of see across when the light hits it. Probably see it more from the other side. Those sort of shiny areas, particularly on the horn there. And we've got a very shiny area on the top there. And more shiny areas on the top here as well. However, it's a tiny bit flat. So what I do is a dragon gloss mask. So if I control shift left click on that, you can see that I've painted on areas that are slightly gray and darker. So I start off with a completely white texture. So I create a new texture over here and make it completely white. And because I've got it going through a multiply node here, when it starts off white, it's having no influence because a multiply node will only take the dark bits and make whatever's coming in here darker. But when I start painting black on, I can start painting the shiny bits on. So as you can see here, I've sort of painted certain areas that I want to be more shiny and just randomly put them around the place that might catch the light, like the horn here and so forth. When I put them into this multiply node, we get this effect with the cavity map that's been reversed, of course, and the combination of this dragon gloss mask here that's using the multiply. We've got a lot more variation in our shape and therefore we've got those areas of shininess that really offer that sort of variation. So if I zoom out, the last bit, if I take the final mix shader, you can see there's an emission here. And I've used the dragon cavity again with an emission mask this time. And if I go across my timeline, I've got a tiny timeline window here. You can see it gets brighter in certain areas and goes darker again. So I've animated the emission value here. So if I zoom into the strength, you can right click on these and set keyframes. So you can see the strength changing when it goes across and there's certain areas that are bright and shiny. So let's go up to the top and see what that's doing. So for all these mixed shaders, you can use the factor as well. And the factor, anything that's black will show the top one, anything that's white will show the bottom one. So we can again use black and white masks, so like the dragon cavity here, into a color ramp and you can see these white bits here. So any white bits will be showing that emission. But I didn't want the whole shape having an emission. I wanted just this bottom bit. So I used an emission mask, again with the multiply. So with the emission mask, let's control left click on that. You can see that I've painted just this area here and these areas down here. So when it goes into the multiply node, it will be scrubbing out all the other areas. So we only have that bottom bit there. Then the final mix shader with everything in we can see we've got these glowing areas here. If I show it with material preview mode, you can see it without any lighting setup. I feel like that looks very flat and has a lack of character. So if I go to the rendered view, you can see it's a lot more moody. And that's the lighting setup I've got here. So you can see I've got lots of lights surrounding my dragon in the middle. This is top view at the moment. In fact, let's go to actual top view. So you can see all the lights going around. There's a spotlight there, an area light. And I just surround it with lights, but then very the strength and the color of those lights to add atmosphere and effect as I see fit. And you can see the different settings over here in my lighting settings for each of these. You can see how the color changes and the strength changes. For the backlights, I like to make them really strong. They look a bit funny from this side, but as we're viewing it from this side, you can see it offers that sort of rim light effect, especially on glossy areas. So we've got this sort of blue glow, but when I come around to here, it's quite nice to have a sort of blue glow on the horns and a green glow on the outline. And when we're talking film and photography, those are called rim lights. Okay, so hopefully that answered a few questions. I'll probably do a more detailed breakdown of the emission node. If anybody wants to see that, let me know in the comments below. But hopefully this has been helpful to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.